It's already been an uncertain year, but now over a million students in the U.S. from all over the world were blindsided this week by a surprise announcement by the Trump administration. The message? If colleges and universities decided to only give courses online this upcoming semester, then international students would have to go home. Salvador Maratillo is one of those whose life is suddenly in limbo, facing the threat of his student visa being cancelled and, if he doesn't leave voluntarily, being deported. Do you feel like this is unfair, that you're being unfairly targeted here? It is. It's either forcing us to take in-person classes while corona cases are surging, especially here in the U.S., or taking or forcing students to travel back to their home country. Salvador is studying audio production and hopes to be a sound engineer. He's supposed to be going into his second year at the Los Angeles Film School in California, but instead the 19-year-old Peruvian is worrying about his options because going home is complicated. So my parents actually live in China, um, but we've kind of like uh, crossed out the, the, the chance of me going back to China to see them. So the, it would most likely be me going back to Peru where like my grandparents are at. More than 8,000 colleges and universities in the U.S. who accept foreign students are impacted by this sudden decision. If they're not going to be a student, or if they're going to be 100% online, then they don't have a basis to be here. The Trump administration says they're looking at providing as much flexibility as possible, because over a quarter of some schools' budgets come from international students. But universities and colleges aren't putting much faith in that. Harvard and MIT have filed a lawsuit against the Trump administration. In this lawsuit, they allege that the effect and perhaps even the overall goal is to cause as much chaos for international students and universities as possible. Higher education in the U.S. is a huge money spinner for universities. In 2018, just the students from China, India and South Korea contributed more than $44 billion to the U.S. economy. I feel like we deserve to, to be here. We're also like uh, international students are also uh, supporting the economy in some sort of way. We're paying tuition. We're paying for our apartments, our housing. For now, Salvador will have to pay his rent up front as he waits for a court decision and his college on how they'll teach classes next semester. I decided to be here in L.A. to be surrounded by these professionals. You know, it's been a dream of mine to like learn from them stuff that I wouldn't be able to, to obtain if I was maybe back in my country or back in China. After so much hard work, so many are caught up in politics they want no part of. Robin Kerno, CNN, Atlanta.